Jason. So Jason got second that show. And Jason got online and he commented, yep. And he said, man, I came in, I looked great, man. But he knew that the main reason for why, you know, he didn't place as well as he thought he should, or maybe one, is because of his presence. And he said that he needed to work on it. And I think it was a nervous thing, like, I'm going against Logan. Everyone's talking about Logan. He's the next big thing, you know? And people allow uh, social media to impact how they feel about themselves. I don't, like, I'm one of them people where I'm, I'm excited to go against the best. I'm excited to prove everybody wrong, you know? And it fuels my fire. Like, don't talk about me. You don't talk about me. The more you don't talk about me, the more I'm going to bust my ass to prove everybody wrong. And then some people, the more they talk about others, the more intimidated they become. And that's not a, a winning type of mentality. Here, but it came up a lot since the feedback. The feedback was my uh, lat insertions to come down a little bit more, a little bit more lat thickness, mm. right from the front, um, and also more of a uh, far swoop. But they both have came up already. So, but you know, you really see when you fully come down with your body fat. But thus far, we're happy with the progress. Gotcha. Yeah, so how Miami happened, Miami happened because my birthday is March the 3rd. My brother's birthday is March the 9th. So I told him, let me treat him to a, you know, a mini vacation before I start prep for what I'm doing now, which is Pittsburgh. Um, so I think I was at the time I was about eight weeks out or something like that. And I said, let me go to Miami, you know, enjoy myself before I go balls into this prep. And uh, as far as like what happened in Miami, I mean, Miami is a is a town that tend to show people that is involved in fitness a lot of love. So just, you know, walking around and things like that, you know, you can tell people really enjoyed my physique. Um, the most memorable is uh, a TikTok video that went viral. You know, something that wasn't planned. Guy just walked up to me, asked me if he can take some photos. I said, sure. I didn't understand the gimmick behind it until after the video. The entire time someone's recording everything's going on. Right? And in the process of doing that, a young lady's walking up the street. I catch her looking at me. Right. So I say, hey, I say, come here. Um, while the actual shoot's going on, I'm pretty much telling him to give me a second. Right. We exchanged invitations. Um, and then we got back to the shoot with how everything, you know, uh, the transaction of everything, how it happened, the video went viral. Yeah. I personally um, mentally would struggle with letting myself go, like seeing myself look so extraordinary to then putting on all this body fat. So I try not to go over like 9%, 10% body fat, and then I can go to places like Miami in the off season and have experiences like I did. Bodybuilding and competing, I believe you should be well balanced, right? And you should be prepared for any, any, any opportunity that might come your way, right? So you don't want to bring individuals who on social media, you have all these amazing pictures. And because in the off season you look bad, you're still posting pictures from when you was in your best shape. You can't post your current physique because you you don't like how you look. You know, um, and I wanted them people, like I said, I get contact for modeling gigs. I actually had some acting recently. Um, and I like to be prepared for something like that. Um, it's cool to me, right? Everyone's different, okay? So, kind of to piggyback off of something she was saying was, I believe in balance, right? So, for example, I went out uh, last weekend and I had a great time and I partied, right? And my coach contacted me at nine in the morning because he pretty much wanted to say, what the hell are you doing, right? But then he know I'm a different breed, right? Like, I can still go out and have a good time probably until about three weeks out. And then three weeks out, I had 100%. I probably go about like 85, right, 90, 
you know? But I'm just like, bodybuilding is a big part of my life, but it's not my entire life. So I'm, I just believe in balance. And so many people, when they're in prep and they have shows, they don't have anything else going on in their life. They think that they have to be all bodybuilding. And I think long-term, a lot of bodybuilders that have did this for a career, realize that was probably the biggest mistake. They didn't, they didn't enjoy life while on this bodybuilding journey. And I feel like I'm a prime example. Like I come in great condition. You know, like what I do to have fun once a week is not gonna change my placement. I, I, I truly don't think me going out once a week is going to change how I place. As long as you're probably not drinking a whole fuck ton. No, nah, I do. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. This goes to power yeah, But more. this the thing, though. This the thing. When I went out last week, like, nah, I, I drunk. Now, when I do drink, though, even the bartender was like, she rarely hear anyone get stuff straight. So I don't mix it with anything. I get double shots of, like, Jack or double shots of Great Goose or double shots of something like that, right? So I'll drink straight vodka. But that's that's a hack. That's like a, it, that's how to keep it thin, right? You don't put all the sugar. All the extra calories and stuff, right? But this is the thing. I wake up and I'm like, holy shit. I wake up and I look better, right? I don't know if you noticed now. A lot of bodybuilders do alcohol the night before. Yeah, I heard I am currently and where I started I think I have a, a great story to tell right and if you understand things that happened at Pittsburgh in 2018 and where I am now right I think it would uh, tell a great story of how someone um, overcome adversity and I am where I am so we kind of set up set a goal right our goal was realistically it doesn't matter how great I look in 2020 we knew that I would be in the top 10 maybe between somewhere between 7th and 10th right and I'll go now this year after talking to a few judges and they gave me some feedback, right? The goal this year is top three and I really think that I'm gonna accomplish that, right? And then I would love to be battling with C-Bum this year for top two, right? But I know if that don't happen this year, it will definitely happen next year. I just know it's a process to this game. You're not gonna just jump up. So I'm setting realistic goals for myself. Because I'm a perfectionist, my favorite always changed to what I need to bring up. Right, so whatever that word is, I mean, so whatever that body part is, I go insane trying to see improvements. And it's funny because I was having a conversation with a pro yesterday where we, we, have talk, we have talked about this before, where a lot of people say genetics, genetics, genetics. And I'm like, to a degree. But some people tell themselves that they can grow certain body parts and they don't even attempt to push themselves to even try to, right? I don't tell myself I can't go any that. If it's something that's underdeveloped, I make that shit grow, and it's gonna grow. And thus far, everything that I have wanted to improve, have improved, and it has surpassed everyone's expectations. But it starts here? Oh, it's always, it's always mentally. If I tell myself I can do anything, I can do anything. If I'm telling myself, if I'm skeptical about what I can accomplish, I'm not gonna do it. Yeah. What have helped me with this sport is stop worrying about the placement and just bring the best divine version that I can bring. And if that physique is rewarded, then great. All right. But all I can do is create the best physique that I possibly can create. All right. And if the judges like it, they will reward it. That's all you have control over. All right. So I'm constantly, like I said, trying to be the best that I can be, you know, um, and on that stage, top five this year was completely different physiques. For example, um, I absolutely like Ruff personality, what he represents for the sport. But to compare Ruff to Chris, who looks like a giant compared to him, just because of shoulder ratio, the height, the way that their uh, uh, physique flow, it's no comparison. That's apples and oranges, right? So at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to what the judge wants to reward. Now this year, I personally feel like it's gonna be a tall, uh, like a tall athlete game. I feel like 
you know, the Logans, the Jones, the me, I feel like it's going to be maybe top four tall, taller, taller guys. And I truly think like some of the shorter guys, they fit better in 212. That's the way that their physique flow. It's just, you know, the president comes from experience, you know, doing multiple shows, getting comfortable. Um, it's also confidence, right? Uh, the more confidence you are in your physique, the more confidence you tend to exude to the audience, right? You can see someone that's new to the stage or kind of questioning where they're going to place based off of who, who is around them, right? I'll give Logan that. His very first, uh, not first show, this was his first show of 2020, the New York Pro. Right, his presence is presence is what did him did it for him or for everybody else. Like he came, and it doesn't matter what no one else thought. You can see that he thought he was a clear winner. It was it wasn't close in his eyes, you know. And sometimes it might be close, but your presence makes the judges believe too. He too confident. It's not close.